Arr! I wanted this machina to stay on. But okay, hello and welcome to my little show. My name is Dr. Weisenheimer and my purpose is to explain techniques uh, either as tutorial form or on my blackboard. This issue is about the fundamental idea that, that led to the Mandel bulb. The basic idea of the Mandel bulb is to use spherical coordinates, which are a real three component number system. The four component number system, the quaternions, did not yield any interesting results when slicing out a 3D object. So, I'm going to start with introducing the complex multiplication via polar coordinates, showing that this is a rotation and a stretching operation. And finally, I show how this um, method is applied to a three-component system, the um, spherical representation of a 3D point. So, Carl Friedrich Gauss introduced the complex numbers uh, because there was no way to express the square root of a negative number. Hence, the result of a multiplication can never be negative when squared. Um, because 1 times 1 is 1, and negative 1 times negative 1 is 1 as well. So you cannot have a square root of negative 1. Carl Friedrich Gauss then introduced the imaginary number i and stated that i times i is negative 1, as shown here. i times i equals negative 1. And this can be written, written as i squared uh, equals negative 1. So far, so good. The imaginary number can be expressed, um, can be displayed as y-axis on a coordinate system, where we have the y-axis and the x-axis, where 1 is here negative 1 is here, negative 1 is here, and 1 is here. Uh, the, 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 the imaginary number i is lays exactly here. We have one i because we are using the y-axis for representing our complex number. And uh, this number is usually written as co Cartesian coordinate 0, 1. This should be known from school. But now we are come to the crucial part. Another way of representing complex numbers is by using a polar coordinate system, where each point is defined through a distance to its center and an angle. And when using this with our uh, coordinate here, we have the um, 0, 1 coordinate, which is, has the distance 1 to its center, which is this one. And we have the 90 degree, which is this. Because, and here we have the angle 0 and the number negative 1, 0 has the same distance to its center, 1. So it stays 1, and but we have a uh, double degree, 180 degree. And when viewing it as this, it is easily visible that multiplication is a rotation in the complex number space, because by our definition, uh, 1 times 1i times 1i equals negative 1 and basically this is this i squared equals um, 180 and you see the angles are the distances stay intact 1 times 1 stays 1 and the angles are doubled because it's a square operation, it's if you if you would um, take it 
power of 3 or something, we would triple the angle. This time we have the multiplication 1i times 1i defined via multiplication its distance and adding its angles resulting in the 180 degree because 90 times 2 is 180. We see this holds even true for the negative 1 number, uh, this one expressed as polar coordinate with 1 180 squared. Uh, we all know that negative 1 times negative 1 is um, 1. So we add this 180 degree angle from here to here and we are landing on the exactly real axis 1. And guess what? You have a little um, what is the result of negative 1 times negative 1i? You guessed right, it is negative 1 as well, because the 273 degrees are added, added together, resulting in 540, which is modulus 360, um, exactly the 180 degree that we see here, and we land on the x axis as well. This observation led to the spherical definition of the multiplication, the triplex multiplication. The same method can be applied to an additional axis. Spherical coordinates use a distance but two angles to define a point in 3D space. Both angles are added together similar to the polar multiplication, that gives us a three-component vector multiplication. This, method, this multiplication method is so special because it maintains the Mandelbrot in the xy plane, that gives interesting uh, structures above and below the xy plane. And as a side note, this multiplication definition is uh, commutative, is commutative, but not associative nor distributive. While multiplying, the lengths are multiplied as well. That stretches the distance. You know, two times two is four, so we would result in two uh, i times two i in negative four. Um, but since we worked on the unit circle, which is exactly lying on the one uh, circle, uh, this did not become visible on my little cardboard here. And now the only thing missing to calculate a 3D Mandelbrot candidate um, is by adding each component of the vector um, that gives us the second necessary operator, the addition, to achieve a true 3D Mandelbrot candidate. Thank you for watching and we ex will explore this uh, topic a little further in the next issues. Uh, so stay tuned and thank you for watching. I will now try to get this machina stay on, you know. Ah! Arr!